Next is independence. These, it's, it's fascinating to me how often these get grouped together. You'll hear them said in a, in a sort of a slur. And you say, you know, autonomous, like self-determining, rational, independent, blah, 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 blah. Whereas, in fact, if we stop and pause and think about it, we'll notice that these things are really very different. And independence in particular, when we actually parse it out, has virtually nothing to do with self-determination. Virtually nothing. By independence, I mean the ability to do things for yourself without help. This is often conflated with self-determination or even with autonomy in general. Self-determination is about the ability to make choices and then stick to your choices. Independence is about the ability to do things without help. Now, if you have the proper support, you can perfectly well make choices and stick to them with help, right? It may well be, in fact, in a second I'll claim it always is the case that in order to make and stick to our choices, we rely on other people. Lack of independence only undercuts self-determination if you don't have that support and the people and material environment around you aren't able or willing to support you in the choices that you make. So I've got up here a picture of Stephen Hawking. You probably all recognize him. Here's somebody who's as radically dependent as almost any living human being, right? There is nothing that he can do without the help of others. He is 100% dependent for every breath he takes and every motion he makes. I didn't mean to quote the police, it just happened. Um, <laughs> he's dependent on an enormous amount of human-created technology on the people around him who get him where he needs to go and help translate his words for him. Um, he depends on enormous amount of financial resources, which luckily for him he has, right? And those financial resources are used to purchase technology and help of an enormous wide variety. And basically his independence at this point is down to virtually zero. And yet to say that Stephen Hawking is not a self-determining individual, that he doesn't in an important sense have autonomy, is patently absurd, right? This is a man who has done exactly what he wants in life and been spectacularly successful at it. He has changed the shape of physics. He has changed what it means to talk about physics to a popular audience. He has, by all reports, an active and full social life and love life, and he has lived an incredibly self-determining full life. How did he do that? He did that because he made choices and executed those choices with an enormous amount of help. Right? On the flip side, in states where we have legal physician-assisted autonomy, most of the statistics still, uh, sorry, physician-assisted suicide, good. Um, most of the statistics at this point still come from Oregon, even though we now have four states with legal physician-assisted suicide. But Oregon's the one that has been doing this for long enough for us to have good data about it, and also data comes from countries like the Netherlands. Interestingly, when people are asked why they're pursuing physician-assisted suicide, it turns out that pain is very low on the list. The overwhelming dominant reasons why people um, seek that are what they describe as loss of independence. Right? So loss of, loss of independence is crucially important to people in terms of their um, sense of self and their sense of autonomy. But, there's an interesting question, which I think runs really deep, and I wish I could spend longer on this than I can, about why independence is so important to people. Right? Why does it feel so linked to autonomy? It seems that for most of us in our culture, and probably in most cultures, physically dependent people do not have adequate support or resources and become at the mercy of overworked healthcare workers, for example, who are on lots of other people's schedules at once. Um, and they end up with very little by way of self-determination. But my point is that 
the loss of self-determination doesn't go automatically with the loss of independence. That's a culturally situated fact that for most people, they do not have the resources or the support network, nor do we as a culture have the infrastructure to give dependent people self-determination. So when people, for the most part, lose their independence, they also lose their self-determination. But, but the two are not sutured together, right? It's a culturally contingent fact, and one that we should be probably putting some bioethical and policy thought into that those two stand and fall together. And that's made very vivid by the example of people like Stephen Hawking, who do have an enormous amount of resources, an enormous amount of will, and um, manage to peel those two apart from one another. Disability theorists have very articulately asked, in the context of bioethics, why is independence so valuable to us anyhow, right? If you take away from the, if you can manage to decouple it from self-determination, right? Because if independence is sutured to self-determination, then obviously it's important to us. But if you manage to peel them apart, why is independence so important to us? Why are we so terrified, often even disgusted, by the idea of being dependent on other people for our physical needs? Maybe instead of simply blindly valuing independence for its own sake, we ought to also be doing some critical questioning of why we take dependence to be so shameful and so horrible and think about how much of that is because of what that dependence means in our cultural context rather than what's inherently wrong with being dependent. Because after all, when you stop and think about it, we're all actually radically dependent. To the extent that we feel physically independent, it's to a large extent an illusion produced by the fact that our kinds of dependence, for most of us, are so routine that they've become invisible and we no longer notice them. So that probably sounds like a mysterious claim. My point is this, very concrete claim. Most of us, certainly me, if you took us and dropped us in the middle of the wild with no food or shelter, we wouldn't last very long. <laughs> Right? Most of us count on other people every instant and in incredibly pervasive ways to keep us, uh, you know, keep our temperature regulated, keep us fed, keep us sheltered from the elements, keep us clothed, keep us everything. Right? We, we exist in an incredibly tight, wide network of mutual dependence. And our so-called physical independence is really incredibly um, conditional, right? Especially, say, if you live out in the suburbs or somewhere where you can't really plausibly feed yourself without, say, a car and driving abilities. Think about the huge chain of dependence that leads to you just having a meal on your table, right? Not only did you not grow or make or provide that food, but you couldn't get to it without this huge reliance on technology and so on and so forth. So independence, in fact, when we have it, is incredibly focal and situational and limited thing. And the, the thing is, we notice forms of dependence when they're unusual or stick out, right? So as one um, disabled bioethicist puts it, if you need somebody to wipe your own butt, that feels like a huge crisis and loss of self. That's a form of dependence that we hold up as a sort of symbol of the most crushing kind of dependence. But of course, on the one hand, millions of people need help wiping their own butts. You needed help wiping your own butt when you're a baby, and you probably will again when you get to the end at the other side, right, at various times in between. So it's actually not all that unusual. And plus, it's just one form of dependence among the many, many, many that we all have. So I'm not trying to devalue independence altogether. There's lots of ways in which independence is valuable in particular situations. But what I'm trying to get out of this little part of the talk is basically threefold. On the one hand, independence is not the same as self-determination. It's a separate thing, and it's just a cultural contingency that they're so linked together. On the other hand, we are all mostly radically dependent anyhow in ways that become invisible. So the kinds of independence that matter to us are very focal and limited. And on the third and final hand, we um, should probably do some cultural critique about why we treat 
those kinds of focal dependence and independence as important as we do, right? It's not inevitable <laughs> that we should view special kinds of dependence on other people as such a crushing blow to our autonomy as we do right now. 